No doubt that uh, congenitally trained anomalies U2 septatitis represent the most challenging procedure. Let's share together, step by step, moment by moment, the technique of hysteroscopy. Going through the cervical canal is the most crucial and important step. As I always repeat and say, success in the access. If you enter properly, you will see well, and then you can proceed to continue uh, the surgery. So here in the cervical canal, take your time, and if there is some blood, you should do irrigation and cleaning of this mucus and blood. Otherwise, you will be as driving your car with the front window uh, covered by fogs. So you can see that the cavity has some little blood and blood clots this. So continuous irrigation and manipulating the fluid pressure to push a jet wash to do a turbulence and clean the content of the cap. There is no any worry of fluid overload in this uh, step of the procedure. You are still in the cervical canal. Unless you have a jet wash, you will not be able to drive safely. As I say, the front window will be covered by uh, fog, which is mucus and blood, and you might go into a false track. So here I am at the level of the internal os, stand and pose a little. Give it time. Don't push your hysteroscope like a uterine dilator. Give it time. Rotate the telescope to direct, to direct the jet wash to hit the uterine wall. Let me say it again. You see there is some blood adherent to the wall of the uterus. If you start your surgery with this situation, you will definitely not be comfortably seeing well. So again, direct the tip of your sheath of hysteroscope and push a strong jet of fluid to clean all these blood clots and reach a comfortable uh, clear view now that's the septum and obviously you can see that the endometrium overlying the septum is a little bit different than the rest of the endometrium i don't know but some of the series of uh, the theories of recurrent abortion is because of defective uh, endometrial covering of the septum. Anyway, I'm still in the phase of cleaning the cavity. Take your time. Hystroscopy is not just a surgery. It's a strategy, planning, science, mathematics, adjustment. So by pushing the hysteroscope gently into each cornea, and again, look at this blood uh, curtain over the wall of the uterus. Again, directing the jet of fluid will clean all this blood. Give it time. And if you are watching the recording now and counting the time, it's not more than two minutes. So don't be in a rush. And you will uh, obviously see with me that the complete procedure wouldn't ex exceed 10 minutes. But if you go in correct, you will finish correct. So stay, follow and listen more tips. And now I'm shifting to the large 26 inch resectoscope and this is the uh, monopolar needle electrode. The strategy is to achieve a proper stretching of the tissues of the septum. How to reach that? By using the proper and optimum fluid pressure to keep the walls of the uterus distended, stretching the septum. If the septum is lax, and not stretch cutting will be very difficult and you might go into uh, different levels of cutting and irregular uh, surgery so <clears throat> sometimes i rotate uh, the electrode towards one cornea and by the way you have to remove to move the electrode very gently just touch the tissues don't cut give a chance for spontaneous retraction now i give you the secret <clears throat> the cutting element in the surgery is not the uh, monopolar electrode. The cutting element is the fluid pressure. 
just give a lead to the cut by making a small touch and then the fluid pressure will continue cutting into the proper plane into the least resistance so by this you guarantee that you are exactly in the middle and the most important crucial factor in success of surgery is to achieve equal retraction anterior and posterior septum is a bulk of muscles stretched between the anterior and posterior wall and these muscles used to belong to the anterior and posterior wall embryologically this fiber should have been migrated up and down leaving a normal cavity so this is actually my theory in the embryology that failure of migration of the muscle fibers to the anterior and posterior results in the persistent anomaly of a septiduris. So again, it's what you used to hear in textbooks of embryology that failure of absorption of the midline structure results in the septiduris. There is nothing goes to vanish or nothing disappear. It is not absorption, it is migration of the tissues. That's why if you follow carefully my technique, uh, surgery here, complete the unfinished job of embryology. So you just touch and move. And by the way, you will see these are muscle fibers. It's not it's looking wide, but these are, it's a muscle and little fibrous tissue. And you have to take the tubal ostium as your GPS level. Unless you have a view to the tubal ostium, you might be getting going very much up or down and then perforate. If you face some bleeders, don't panic. This bleeding is not serious at all. And if left like that, it will not affect the patient or compromise patient health. But we need to cauterize to avoid the bloody uh, view because the blood mixed with the fluid and then you will not be seeing well. So move the electrode from side to side, very steady hand, millimeter by millimeter adjustment. You Sometimes I move two millimeters up, two millimeters down by observing the fibers retraction and then you readjust your level of cut. My dear friends, septum surgery is not just cut and forget. In many instances, the surgeon might cut the septum perfectly and have a post-operative beautiful cavity, but still there is no pregnancy. So the key of success to achieve equal retraction of fibers, which result in equal thickness of the anterior and posterior wall. Keep watching and more tips coming. So almost the uh, reconstruction is completed. The final part near the fundus need, needs a very fine uh, adjustment and cutting. The cutoff limit of surgery when both tubal ostia are at the same level, guided by the preoperative 3D, which tells about the thickness of the fundus. Don't exceed the level of the two ostia, otherwise you'll perforate. And then you enjoy the final view and go out. This video is non-edited video which showed the real time of surgery. Uh, although you can obviously see I'm working very slow but finish very quickly. My dear friends, I'm very glad to share with you the pre-operative histography and the post-operative histography. That's Osama Shauki from Egypt. Thank you very much.